The summer between our first and second year of medical school, around one third of our class traveled around the world to volunteer in various mission hospitals. We came back and shared our stories of our adventures, heartache, frustration, and inspirations. Papua New Guinea, Cameroon, Zimbabwe, and Haiti are just a few of the locations from which these stories emerged. We were struck by a common theme of inspirations and heartache, great pleasure and great pain. The extremes of life manifesting in the midst of poverty, disease, and hunger. Our class wanted to know what if we took a stand. We looked into adopting a hospital as a class to pour our energy together to accomplish something that only together we could do. We chose a struggling hospital in Haiti, Hospital Adventista de Haiti. Approximately 100 of our classmates committed to help raise money for an endowment that will provide services for the poor for many years to come. We sent out a letter and a DVD to over a thousand friends and family. We visited churches, partnered with high schools, went to conferences and spoke. We even shared in a TV interview. Any opportunity that opened, we gladly walked through. Last summer, we took our first trip to the hospital with a group of doctors, surgeons, medical students, PT students, public health students, a businessman, and even Dr. Hadley, our dean. We ask you to guide us uh, through this operation. And thank you so much for the people of Haiti. Amen. Amen. And Dr. Hart, our university president, came along. We did a lengthy hospital assessment, two-year audit of books. We ran clinics, picked up garbage, painted, helped build a hospital facility, performed several surgeries, and built meaningful relationships with those who work at the hospital. Most importantly, we witnessed lives transformed, like Dijalini, who suffered from dacro stenosis. And just happy as can be, but she was crying all her life. She's just been crying because she didn't have any ducts going from her eye into her, into her nose like like we do. And she was just going over to everybody, giving them hugs. She was bouncing around. We we blew up a balloon for her, and her eyes got big, and she was just just excited. Happiest thing that could happen to her. She was throwing it around. Um, it made the exam kind of difficult. We we <laughs> was kind of like, no, stop playing with the balloon. You need to. We need to test your eyes. But with her, uh, just blinking, normal tears, it would make her cry. It looked like she was crying constantly. And so this leads to problems like uh, increased eye infections, just because the body isn't working properly. To be faithful to that calling, to that responsibility that we all have of, of taking care of others. It was really cool when we got to go and, and see her operation. Uh, I was really scared. I would have been so scared to have that needle in me, but of course she was knocked out, so it didn't matter. But um, yeah, it was just really cool to see how we could help her and help her to become even a better version of herself. So. take a, um, a probe and just probe into the nose and open up the tear duct. She was the cutest girl in the world. She was so bubbly and friendly and loving. She'd just come up to strangers and just give us big hugs and it was really nice to see that, that we could help her and then make her life so different after being here. That was rewarding. We can, we can do so much, and yet, really, ultimately, it's um, it's God's work that that really transforms. We came back overwhelmed by a daunting task, but energized by a chance to make a difference. We organized ourselves, split up jobs, met together, and prayed for guidance. We realized that we needed an endowment to help fund the procedures and material for the poor. 
With a goal of $100,000 by graduation, in less than one year, close to $40,000 has been raised. A group of three classmates, Donald, Alex, and Joe, recently traveled to Haiti over Christmas break. We toured the hospital making assessments, trying to set up a curriculum for rotating fourth year medical students. One day we came across a man who had broken his back. For two months he had lay in bed, paralyzed from the waist down, unable to care for himself, and without any means of paying for the most basic things, his health quickly deteriorated. He developed deep pressure ulcers, fat to the bone that were overrun with infection. This man once worked for the mayor, but now was stripped of his dignity and right to basic medical attention. My classmates and I provided some gauze and medication and cleaned up the ulcers. The story is very interesting because even though we did all that, that uh, dressing changes and we spent two and a half hours with him, the thing that he appreciated the most was a simple back row. If you could imagine laying on your back for three months without having a bed bath, without having any care, you could imagine what state you would be in, the ache that your, your back would have, the, the condition of your skin, how dirty it would be, how dry it would be. And we, not even knowing what we were doing, we would just found some lotion close by and gave him a back massage. And that just changed his whole day. He started smiling and he was thanking us so much. And we actually didn't realize how much of a difference just that back row made for this child. With proper medical care and the help of an endowment fund, patients like this man could find a way to be rehabilitated. The potential when a group of people partner with God is not what if, but what will be. With a constant flow of students, support of an endowment, and the power of God, what will be is transformation. For those in need, and in our own, hearts as well.